Hello friends, welcome to our channel My Health Scope. I am Dr. Gopal Pillai and I will be taking you through one health problem each episode. Today we will be talking about diabetes and the eye. As you know, diabetes is a very very common problem. A lot of people in the world over 40 years of age are affected by this problem. And diabetes causes significant loss of eyesight. And most of these blindness are permanent. Permanent blindness is a major pathology. Let's see first of all, how does diabetes cause blindness? Diabetes can cause cataract. Cataract is basically an opacification in the lens of the eye. Then it can cause glaucoma. Glaucoma is increasing pressure inside the eye. And thirdly, and most importantly, diabetes can cause diabetic retinopathy. It affects the retina. The retina is on the back of the eye, which is just like a film in a camera. And the light focuses through the lens into the retina. So when the retina gets damaged, the vision gets permanently affected. Cataract is a reversible condition. When you do a cataract surgery, you will get back the vision. Glaucoma is something which you should be managing medically with drugs, drops and retinopathy is a disease which we need to take care of very well. Otherwise, we will completely lose vision. Let's look at what are the symptoms of diabetic retinopathy. The major problem about diagnosing a diabetic retinopathy is that there are no symptoms in the initial phases. For the first 10 or 15 years of diabetes, when diabetes causes a lot of problems within the retina, there are absolutely no symptoms. People will be able to drive, read, look at people, recognize people. They would be able to do all the daily life activities and they wouldn't ever suspect that diabetes is slowly causing problems inside the eye. Now, at the very late stage, maybe after 15 to 20 years, there would be slowly progressive, painless decrease of vision, which would progress and suddenly cause a loss of vision, either because of a bleeding inside the eye or because the retina tore itself from where it should be. So these are the two, three major causes of decrease of vision in diabetes. One would be an edema or a swelling in the central part of the retina, which is called a diabetic macular edema. Number two would be a bleeding into the eye, which is called vitreous hemorrhage. Number three is that retina gets torn from itself and that's called a retinal detachment. These are the three main causes of decrease of vision in a case of diabetes. Now let us look at how we can diagnose diabetic retinopathy. Diagnosis of diabetic retinopathy requires that you do a full evaluation of the visual function, including vision, color vision, visual fields, and then we will have to dilate the pupils by using drops. And once you dilate the pupils, we will be able to see the retina. There are different techniques to see the retina, including indirect ophthalmoscopy, direct ophthalmoscopy, or stereoscopic biomicroscopy. These are more technical terms which you wouldn't have to understand. But the doctor would look at your retina and diagnose diabetic retinopathy. Once we diagnose diabetic retinopathy, then we need to grade its severity. 
Diabetic retinopathy is graded from mild, moderate, severe, and very severe non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, which is an earlier stage, to proliferative diabetic retinopathy, which is a later stage. So this grading of diabetic retinopathy requires a process called fluorescent angiography. It's an investigation where you inject a dye into a venous system and then take photographs of the retina and we find out how much is the severity of diabetic retinopathy. To understand how much is the edema or swelling in the retina, we will do another investigation called optical coherence tomography, otherwise in short called OCT. Diabetic patients are very well acquainted with this machine called OCT because they are required to go through these OCT multiple times in their life. OCT gives us the central retinal thickness. The normal central retinal thickness would be less than 300 and more than 350 microns of central retinal thickness may warrant treatment of the diabetic macular edema. Now we will go to what is the treatment of diabetic retinopathy. In the initial phases, when I said that diabetic retinopathy would move from mild to moderate to severe to very severe diabetic retinopathy, in the earlier stages, we would just observe the patient and ask the patient to control his diabetes quite well in terms of blood sugar control, cholesterol and blood pressure control. A lot of studies have shown that blood sugar control can reduce the progression of diabetic retinopathy. Similar with cholesterol, triglycerides as well as hypertension. 10 millimeters of mercury reduction in blood pressure can significantly reduce the progression of diabetic retinopathy. Once we move into more severe stages of diabetic retinopathy, including macular edema or a bleeding points which will come inside the eye, which are called neovascularizations, we will have to resort to more drastic treatments within the eye. Diabetic macular edema is best treated with intravitreal injections which are small you know, injections which we give inside the eye. Many of these patients may require 6 to 8 injections per year to keep the visual acuity really well. With reduced number of injections, the visual acuity may fall down further. Next important step in the management of diabetic retinopathy is laser. You would have heard the term laser. It's light which is amplified and put into the retina. You use something called a double frequency YAG laser to treat the retina. Whenever there are new bleeding points, otherwise called neovascularizations, you would laser the retina and uh, with three or four sittings of laser, you will be able to salvage that retina from losing vision. Once bleeding occurs or once traction retinal detachment occurs, then you will not be able to salvage the retina or give back the vision by doing injection or laser. Then we will have to resort to surgical methods. The surgical methods for managing diabetic retinopathy is called vitrectomy. A vitrectomy surgery would initially remove all the vitreous and if there is any blood accompanied with it, we will remove the blood as well and then we will be manipulating the retina to make it attached and then do the laser and for preventing further bleeding and tamponading the retina in the correct position, we will use an oil called silicon oil. With surgery, most of the patients will regain ambulatory vision, but most of them will not attain reading visual acuity. Small letters for reading will require about 95% vision and most of these patients retain about 75-80% to 80 vision. Later, if we are operating very late in the stage of diabetic retinopathy, you may get only 20-30% to 30 vision which may be sufficient to walk around. Only that much. 
But the crux of the issue here is to screen for diabetic retinopathy early if you're a diabetes and evaluate yourself every year at least, even if you do not have a diabetic retinopathy, to see if diabetic retinopathy is coming up and if diabetic retinopathy is coming, treating early with medical management measures like injections and laser so that people wouldn't go into vitreous hemorrhage or retinal detachment and lose vision. The aim of treatment is always to diagnose early and to treat early and prevent complications. Check yearly and see clearly. Thank you very much.